Hi, it's Mary, Queen MLB, October 22nd, 2019, Talk to Me Tuesday. And I only have one thing to show you, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to start on tonight. What I want to show you is placemats. This is one, and I'll show you the rest. This is blueberries. And this is actually, can you see the strawberry design quilted on it? I would, I typically show the back to you because it shows better, but this back has no quilting on it. And I'll tell you why. These, this was a panel. There were four of these. <clears throat> I got it at, on sale at, um, probably fabric.com, possibly pineapple, but Pretty sure it was fabric.com. These panels were on sale for, for $9.99 and you got four of them. And so it was blueberries, strawberries, cherries, and blackberries. And two of them have the white checks on it and two of them have light blue checks on it. And so I couldn't pass that up for place, placemats for $10. This is leftover backing from a quilt that I finished and this is leftover backing from a quilt that I finished and guess what's in the middle leftover batting from a quilt I just finished so the whole thing <clears throat> was made with what I had plus $9.99 and the $9.99, by the way, was because you need $50 to get free shipping. And so I was a couple dollars short on the free shipping. So I hit um, sale to see what I could pick up for I needed like $7 or something. And ta-da, there it was. So um, free shipping. So it really just cost me $9.99 plus what I had. And the reason I like these, besides the fact that they're just awfully cute is um, the technique I did. I combined two techniques that I learned at my quilt shop. My quilt shop, my local quilt shop, the Quilt Corner, has um, these parties every couple months. And at the parties they do demonstrations on the long arms of things you didn't know you could do on a long arm. And one of them was to make a pillow. So I came home and promptly made a pillow and then another one was um, putting well it was actually making a, uh, a bag for your scraps and threads from the long arm but it was actually piecing on the long arm which I always knew I could do I just had never done it and I, I do actually put binding on on my long arm so I knew how to do that so what I did was I decided I could make these placemats entirely on the long arm and except for this one line of stitching top stitching I did so um, if you want all the gory details go to Instagram but basically what happened was um, I put a piece of muslin down already out of my scraps I stretched a piece of muslin more than four placemats wide across my long arm and then I put a piece of batting on it and then face up I put these four squares just lined up. I think I've got a picture of that right here. Let's see. So next I went from and this is actually the placemat isn't, but the, with the, what do you call these things? Borders on it. It is wider than my thread space. So I actually put, um, the side all on the long arm. I put the, um, side borders on, then the top, and then I rolled it down and put, um, the bottoms on. So, so far all done on the long arm. And here's a picture of that. So having my placemats with the borders on them and batting and muslin underneath it, I then quilted them. And I did two rows, again, just because my thread space isn't wide enough to do the whole thing. So I put strawberries. Now, although there are blueberries, blackberries, cherries, and strawberries, I put the strawberry design on all four of them. I want to say from a... Um, 
design standpoint, this was purely to pull them together and make them all cohesive and coordinated and all that. The bottom line is I had a strawberry design that came with my long arm and I didn't have blueberries, cherries, and blackberries and didn't feel like shopping for them or buying them. So they're all have strawberries on them. So then I quilted that on there and I think I've got a picture of that here. So then, um, oh, and these, by, these um, why can I not remember the word border today? These borders were left over, and they were about, mm, some were five, some were six inches wide, and I knew I needed two and a half. And so rather than um, trim, them, trim them, cut them to size or anything, I just, um, I cut this length right for the sides. And then I made sure that these one side of each piece was straight and I just sewed them on knowing I could trim them later. So at this point, of course, I've got this on my long arm face up, but with leftover things and they were overlapping between them and everything. And I didn't care because I knew where I was going with this. And so then I took the backing, which I had pre-cut to the correct size and laid it face down on the top of all of these, simply stitched around it and left a, an opening and I was done. So cut those off of there. Now, another reason this was such a learning pro, uh, process for me or such a good process for me before I started doing these things on a crazy big quilt is I have two new feet and um, actually I have three, but two are the same. So I only had to play with one. One is called a square foot and it is just like it sounds it is a plastic square foot and I have a half an inch and a quarter inch so on this I want a quarter inch seams so I knew, used my new quarter inch square foot and oh my goodness from basting to sewing you know seams to sewing the back onto the front all of that done with the square foot and I'm sure the half inch one works just as well but it's just a perfect quarter inch seam and it's I love those feet I assume I love the half inch one as much as I love the quarter inch one but it probably won't get as much use now from a quilting standpoint and not a sewing standpoint I'll probably use the half inch one because it, it's going to be real great for piano keys and a lot of other things um, that I could do with rulers, but if between the square foot and the channel locks, which is what I did all of this on, so I knew I had basted it on straight, so I knew that my um, all of my um, borders, there's that word again, it's the non word of the day, I knew all my borders would be on perfectly straight and square because I was using channel locks to sew exactly straight with my square foot. So the square foot worked out great and I will use that a lot. I think I'm going to use it to baste my quilts onto my machine and maybe do some stuff that I would otherwise do with um, rulers, but I can do it with channel locks and the square feet. The second foot I have is called a glide foot on Handy Quilter. Other places call it a spoon foot, I think. It's a, it's round on the bottom with the hole in the middle. And so the needle goes through that round thing. And what that would have come in so handy for, then the reason I actually bought it was that Minions quilt last week, when I got to where I was going from fabric to denim, particularly with the jean scene in them, I needed that round foot. And so I wanted to test that. So I used my glide foot on all of this. And these aren't big seams to hop, but it didn't flinch. So loving it also. So I have um, test driven my two new feet. Um, so I am very, very happy with these. And um, then when I brought them home, took it off the machine. Molly doesn't live with me. So um, I brought the, these home, cut them apart, trimmed them to half quarter inch, flipped them over, and I. But the plan was to then hand sew the opening together and then top stitch it. I didn't even hand sew them because my top stitching is an eighth of an inch and my seam allowance seams are or my seams, I guess, are quarter inch. So I just sewed them 
right into that eighth inch and didn't have to hand whip anything. So anyway, four little uh, straight lines on each of these times four, 16 straight lines on the domestic, no hand sewing, and um, the rest on the long arms. So anyway, very, very happy with my new placements. And I don't know if I'm going to give them away or sell them or give them to my aunt or something, but I'm happy with them. And I really love the process. I loved doing it all in one day. So um, let me tell you what I'm about to do. I'm about to do my first whole cloth. And the whole cloth is like the last stepping stone to doing the dream big, which scares me to death. So I wanted to do a whole cloth, which is going to be very similar process to how I want to do my, my dream big panel. Um, I did order a dream big. It's coming tomorrow. Um, so I'm ready to do that. But first I want to do a whole cloth because like I said, it's the same concept of outlining a space, filling it in, working from the center out, which is what I want to do on those petals on the um, drain big. So, and I've been putting that off, putting that off because I didn't think I was ready. And then I finally decided I'm not, I, I have this the skills there are no remaining skills i need to learn except the process of a whole cloth so i will start a whole cloth tonight it's called um it's by nancy i will remember her name in a minute or i will put it in the notes but anyway um kathy is actually her name nancy Karen is her name. Okay, Karen is her name. And um, Karen designed this, and several of us are playing on Facebook, and none of us have tried it yet. We're talking about it. We're ordering supplies. We're getting up the nerve. Karen's been um, very, very helpful and encouraging, but I've had this thing for a month, and I'm, I'm going to start it tonight. How to get up the nerve to do that? Well, I have a new friend who lives on an island in the Gulf of Alaska, and she and I are taking this journey together. She is doing hers in light blue. I'm doing mine in gray. We're using matching thread. She's doing a white on cream backing. I'm doing white, and we're both using wool batting. We're both going to do it up, I think, the same size. I won't know until I load it tonight. I'm shooting for 60 inches square. It might have to come down to 58 or 56. Anyway, starting my whole cloth tonight, and my new friend Liz is, is um, just as scared as I am, and we've got it all figured out. That's my iron timing out. And I don't know if it goes off or if it's asking me to turn it off. Hang on. As soon as I stopped that, it turned off, so now we know. Um... So Liz and I are starting this tonight. We're both very, very excited about it. Oh, the other difference is I'm using, I, I wanted something that would, I'm using wool batting for the loft, but um, I want something that if I get a quarter of the way through it and I'm making a mess of it, I don't want to be worried that I've ruined expensive fabric or, or something. And so I'm actually using just um, sheets. And um, she's using a sheet for her back, backing and a piece of sand, sateen that she had already bought um, for her front. So hers, if they, it's fabric nice enough to wear. If it turns out fine, it's good. But if we ruin it, we haven't ruined something extravagant. So um, there's some beautiful silk ones out there and other, other things. So I have really big plans for things to do with a whole cloth design that are not just solid but i want this is the learning technique and i'm very 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 excited about that i the goal tonight is to get it loaded on the machine and um hopefully start stitching tomorrow and oh also tonight i'm going to figure out the size of it so um very very excited about that and um who knows, I may just be up all night doing it, um, but I also may just get cold feet and go home. We'll see, but big, big step there. Um, big learning process to get the whole cloth done, and I will show that to you. Right now, all I have is a digital pattern and two sheets and a package of wool batting, so you don't need to see that. But hopefully by next Tuesday, you will see a whole cloth, and then um, after that, I'm ready to do. Um, ready to do 
the dream big. Now, between those two, I am going to do my tree because this is another thing that knowing how to do a whole, this is essentially a whole cloth. It's kind of a custom, but it's, I'm starting in the middle. I'm going out. I'm using the same process as a whole cloth. And so um, it'll be the next one after my whole cloth test and then the dream big. And then I'm going to do some things that seem fun to me. I hope you like them too. Anyway, that's all I cut. I made four placements this week, and um, and I did some work on the um, Project Linus mystery quilt along. So, um, but we're in we're in a week where we're just putting pieces together. Next week it's going to come together, and it's going to be pretty exciting. So anyway, that's all I did. But I do have very exciting plans, and I do love my placements. Have a good week. Bye.